to another kind of production line altogether. And it's one that's ruffling a few feathers. Here's Trisha Dudu. People have lived in this valley for 6,000 years, but some of those lucky enough to live here today have serious concerns that this historic landscape may be about to change forever. That's because there are plans to build two massive chicken sheds right here in the heart of Herefordshire's unspoilt Golden Valley. It seems chickens are ruling the roost in the county as plans for 31 new farms or expansions have been approved in just five years. Some locals are against the latest proposal, among them Tim Rogers. You'd have two large factories, the length of football pitches, with metal roofs, with vents continuously running at the top of those roofs. This particular location in Herefordshire relies very heavily on tourism, and tourism relies on this landscape. We can't move the landscape, but we could move these to a better and more suitable location. Each shed would hold 40 thousand chickens. It may seem like a lot, but it's pretty typical of modern cost-effective chicken farming. And the National Farmers Union says the industry has to grow to meet rising demand and rural locations are preferred as they limit inconvenience to neighbours. There are two and a half thousand farms or broiler units across the UK. The main centres of production are in Northern Ireland, the East Midlands, East Anglia and my next destination, the West Midlands. So, what does a modern broiler unit look like? Well, the first thing you notice is that they're big, really big. It looks more like a distribution centre than a farm. The six sheds here cover a whopping 11,000 square metres. Hello, you must be David. Award-winning poultry farmer David Speller is my guide. Oh, wow! Chickens as far as the eye can see. So this one's 14 days old. And when will it leave the boiler unit? Potentially our youngest bird would leave at 35 days of age, maximum that, that's age. That's soon, that's soon. Yeah. And it depends on the, the demand of the consumer ultimately. And if they're purchasing smaller chickens off of the retail shelf, then we need to send them to the factory sooner. And what about the droppings? Where do all the chicken droppings go? So the droppings from all of, all of the farms that we're involved with is sold to farmers to use as fertiliser. More than 900 million chickens were slaughtered in the UK last year, up 7% in 10 years. Is the viewpoint that we should just simply import it and, and not grow it at home? Um, personally, as a, as a broiler farmer here, I'm happy that I know how I'm producing this chicken and I know to what standards I'm producing this chicken and it's a good, viable, healthy option. And what about the fact that chickens don't eat grass? You could actually have this in an industrial unit anywhere. To go and buy 10,000 square metres of floor space on the industrial area is very expensive, which would mean the chicken price would have to go up or it just wouldn't be viable to build that farm. Well, having spent time with over 200,000 chickens, I must be honest, there was a strong smell, but it wasn't overwhelming. But I'm not living next door to a broiler unit. And as smell is often a complaint made by opponents, I've called in professional nose Pete Baddle from odour control specialist Air Spectrum to see how far the odour chick travels. First, he samples the air inside the shed then heads outside and samples it next to the vent before taking a final reading 30 metres away. OK, Pete, what have you found? Well, interesting results, actually. Um, inside the building, uh, we managed to find 131 odour units per cubic metre. Just outside, under the side ventilation, was just 44 odour units per cubic metre. And then 30 metres downwind on the boundary, was not detectable, so it's just zero as far as we're concerned. So what is the threshold? We'd expect uh, around about 50 odour units of something like this to be on the borderline of, of being a nuisance to somebody in close proximity. It seems the aroma didn't roam very far. Right by the vents it was already below nuisance levels and by 30 metres it had gone. So if we want our chicken to be both British and cheap, then maybe we'll just have to get used to more industrial style farming units like this in the countryside. They're huge, aren't uh, yeah, they? Uh, wow, mm. just to clean up. And I'm here today at Bannon Poultry, who are our chicken suppliers. We've used them for over 25 years. I'm here with Red Tractor just to really help understand exactly what it means to have Red Tractor approval. 
so that our customers know they can buy from us with confidence. So Quentin, can you, can you tell me a little bit about the lighting conditions and how the birds are, are fed and watered? We have windows in here to try and keep the natural light, which reduce the need for um, some artificial lighting. They have a dark period at night, six hours, again, to try and keep it as natural as possible. We've got bales and we've got perches in here for environmental enrichment. As you can see, they like sitting on it, they like pulling the litter and playing in it, and so again, it keeps it as natural as it can. Can you tell me a little bit more about what Red Tracks are looking for as part of their independent audit? Obviously when we come on site we uh, inspect the bird housing, so come into the sheds, have a look at the, um, the conditions in here, so the bedding, the litter quality, to make sure that's nice and dry, the birds have got some good quality litter to lie on. Uh, we're looking at feed and water, obviously, I check drinkers physically, will make sure that they're free flowing, they've got good access to clean fresh water. The feed pans have got food in them, you know, they've yes. got access to food that meets their nutritional requirements. Mm -hmm. I'm also uh, looking at the birds themselves so that they're, you know, they've got nice clean feathers, they're free moving around the shed, they've got space to move around, you know, demonstrating natural behaviour. Also, you know, the air that they breathe, checking the ventilation settings are, are right, it's nice and clean and fresh in here, the lighting's nice and bright, so it gives a, a good atmosphere for those birds to uh, um, to live in and to grow in. So Red Tractor is all about looking at, at those aspects of, uh, of the whole growing cycle for the bird, really. As a poultry vet, uh, the key aspects that we're going to be interested in are the health and welfare of those birds. So looking at the birds um, on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure they're healthy and free from disease and that they're comfortable so that they can live in, uh, you know, clo as close to their natural requirements as possible. We're looking to see that the birds are, are well feathered, um, that they're nice red combs, uh, clean eyes, um, and also having a look um, to make sure in particular that their hocks are nice and clean which you can see here, which indicates that the birds have been reared in good conditions yes. with good friable litter, as we can see here, um, and also that their feet are clean from any burns as well, which just indicates the birds being managed for good welfare standards. I've been really impressed today to see just the conditions that the chickens are kept in. No cages, which is always one of the questions we're asked by customers, just to see how healthy the chickens look and how happy the chickens look. The passion that the people here have for the chickens that they look after is incredibly important to the quality of the product that we can serve our customers with. And I really believe that sourcing our chickens from Banlin Poultry ensures that we can give our customers the best possible product. chicken industry okay you've got your broilers who are your meat chickens and then you've got the layers who lay the eggs now Angela Rippon is here now to talk a little bit more about chickens uh, as we heard there 2,500 mm. chicken houses now broiler houses yeah. in the UK and this is because our hunger for chicken has gone up dramatically mm. hasn't it oh, it's gone decades. through the roof you can't believe uh, it, it's interesting that actually before the first world war there was hardly any chicken farming in this country at all mm -hmm. you might have a few chickens you know scratching around in the back garden but it wasn't until after the first world war when an awful lot of the soldiers got their demob money that they started to open small chicken farms but it was still even the 1950s before it really took hold and in fact in the 1950s the average British family was eating one kilo of chicken a year. One kilo One a kilo year. a year. I mean, you I can remember... more than that in a snack. You I do, do. <laughs> in a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can rem but I can yeah. remember as a little girl that chicken, yeah. we had, you know, it was a treat for Christmas oh. Day, and you might have had some at Easter, but that was about it. But now, um, let's take a look at this chicken here. It weighs one kilo 75, and now the average British family has two kilo of chicken, so a bit more than that, a month, which means, what, mm. 24, 25 kilos in a year, so it has gone through the roof. Mm. And as a result of that, 
we consume something like two million tons of chicken every year and it makes up 46 percent of the protein that we get from meat so forget your your, your steak your, your lamb your pork and all the other meat mm. most of the protein that we eat now comes from chicken and is that the case with you Pete? do you eat a lot of chicken in comparison to other meats or it for my lunch today <laughs> have you yeah yeah i have actually. what did you have Pete? <laughs> i had a chicken salad lovely. there you go you see <laughs> lovely there's the proof but when you go to the supermarket obviously you pay your money and yeah. you make your choice as to what sort of chicken you have but what are the different regulations then for the different types of chicken well as matt will know that in this country we have actually very high standards yes, very nice very well. strict st standards when it comes to the health and the the humane production of food when it comes to chickens i mean the the, the broiler houses that we saw there it's very interesting um what it says is the amount of space that broiler chickens should have one square meter should be big enough to take 17 to 18 chickens now uh, let me make that even easier to understand piece of a4 paper one of those 17 or 18 chickens should have space which is slightly smaller than that piece of A4 paper. So not a huge amount, no. and that's the amount that they get for the six weeks that it takes to rear them to the point before they go off to the slaughterhouse. But you've also got two other kinds of chicken rearing, and that is free range and organic. And the big difference there is that, first of all, free range chickens have got to have one chicken to one square meter and organic chickens have got to have four square meters to one chicken but the main difference is that they cannot spend the whole of their lives in those big broiler houses they have to have access to fresh air they have to be able to get out of the houses scratch around in the grass have water mm. bales of hay somewhere that they can perch trees that they can shelter under and um, so, so those are the main differences and the free-range chickens go to slaughter at about eight weeks yeah. and the organic at three months much much longer right. but you do you're quite right you pray a pick pay a premium for that let's take this chicken here which is a broiler house chicken one kilo <laughs> One kilo. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. He really is dead. <laughs> it's not going to make any more noise. One, four, that chicken cost four pounds fifty. But if that chicken was a free-range chicken, <laughs> it would be seven pounds seventy. Yeah. And if it was an organic chicken, <laughs> that's the side of the cash register. It would be eleven pounds seventy-three. Wow. It's quite a difference. It's quite a difference.